So today, lesson 32A, adding like expressions. Our focus will be on identifying parts of an algebraic expression. In addition to simplify, uh, simplifying expressions, sometimes we call that combining like terms. And we'll also be naming the different parts uh, of expressions. Now remember yesterday, our focus was on the important properties of mathematics. We also went through in full detail why we need some of these properties or how we can use them. Sometimes it was for uh, the ability to allow us to do some mental math. Sometimes it was for future things. Sometimes it was for past things. Uh, we talked about the idea uh, that the one property yesterday allows us to create equivalent fractions. And then the inverse properties are what allow us to solve equations, which is coming up uh, very, very soon. But today, adding like expressions. All right, so some vocabulary, so we can put some names to all of these things we're talking about today. Um, I'm sure that you defined variable last year. A variable is a letter that stands for a number. That's one typical definition of a variable. So here are some examples. So you're going to be adding some examples to your notes. Uh, so for example, H is a variable. Maybe W is a variable. Of course, we have lots of things we could use for variables. Uh, how about this? I'm sure you've heard of pi. Is pi a variable? No, pi is a number. All right, numerical expression. A numerical expression is a mathematical phrase that uses numbers and operation symbols only. In other words, so far in this class, this year, that's what we've been dealing with, are numerical expressions. So maybe something like uh, 3 plus 9, or maybe 12 minus 7, or maybe negative 14,000 and 3 fifths uh, plus negative 1.8. That might be another example. And then as soon as we start involving variables, we refer to them as algebraic expressions. And an algebraic expression is a mathematical phrase that uses variables, numbers, and operation symbols only. So here are some examples of algebraic expressions. M plus 8, or maybe R minus 3. maybe even 4C. Those are all algebraic expressions. All right, so parts of algebraic expressions, since that's our focus today. Uh, term. A term is part of an algebraic expression that is either a number or the product of a number and variables. And the key component here is that terms are separated by addition or subtraction symbols. So here I have... Uh, a problem for you, and uh, this one is not in your notes, so why don't you look up here. Uh, the question is, how many terms are found in the algebraic expression below? Quickly turn to your shoulder partner. You have 10 seconds. How many algebraic, or excuse me, uh, how many terms are in that algebraic expression? All right, back up here. I heard six, and I heard five. Which one is it? Which one is it? Tell me. It's six. Some of you weren't sure. Uh, there's one term. Here's another term. Here's another term. Here's another term. Here's another term. And there's another term. There are six terms. Now, once again, let's go back to the definition. Part of an algebraic expression that is either a number or the product of a number and variables. That last two, that's a number, but everything else is a product of a number and a variable. So there are six terms there. Um, and one of them is 7x, one of them is 3y, another one is negative 4abc, another one is 6x over m squared, another one is k or 1k, and the last one is Two. Coefficient. Coefficient is a number that is multiplied by a variable. So using that expression right there, that algebraic expression, uh, what are the coefficients? Any ideas there? What are they? 7, 3, 4, and 6. Well, first of all, you got the 7 and the 3, but the 4 is actually a negative 4. 
right? If you don't believe me, add the opposite. You'll see that that's a negative 4. I like the 6 too, though. But look at that k doesn't have a number in front of it, but there really is a number in front of it. We just don't usually write it, and that's a 1. So the coefficients are actually positive 7, positive 3. You should always take the signs in front. Negative 4, positive 6, positive 1. But then we have the lonely 2 out there. That's not a coefficient. It's not a coefficient because it doesn't have a variable next to it or it's not multiplied by a variable. So numbers without variables multiplied by them are called constants. So a number that has no variable. So the 2 is a constant. Okay? So we've put in terminologies to... Uh, or terms or terminologies or definitions to all of these things that make up an algebraic expression. All right, the one that's in your notes is this one right here. So I'd like you to identify all of the basic parts. The terms, coefficients, constants. Just answer the questions that are in your notes, basically. Okay. So the questions that you were asked, you were asked how many terms? Well, there are four terms there. One of them is 12a, another one is negative b, Another one is positive 3c, and another one is negative 6. There are four <coughs> terms there. Terms are separated, remember, by addition or subtraction symbols. The next thing was to list the terms, and I just basically listed them for you. Um, don't forget the signs in front. What are the coefficients? The coefficients are the numbers that are in front of variables. Don't forget that there really is a 1 in front of that b there. So the coefficients are positive 12, negative 1, and positive 3, and then the negative 6 at the very end. And remember, it is a negative 6. And if you don't believe me, add the opposite. You'll see that it is a negative 6. Uh, that is a constant. All right, I know many of you had already done number 2. Can I get all of you to quickly do number 2? Number 2, obviously there are five terms. I'm underlining them. The terms are 7x, <coughs> positive 5, negative 3y, 4ab, and m, or if you wrote that as 1m, that's fine. Uh, the coefficients are the numbers in front of the variables. Don't forget the 1 in front of the m, and then the positive 5 is a constant. All right, I think we have this down. I'm not going to make you each make up one, because uh, I think things are going fairly well here. So let me skip that part, and let's go to this. Everybody look up here, please. The question that I have for you is what you see, and I want you to think and be very specific. Quickly, turn to your shoulder partner and talk about what you see. Be very specific. I asked you to be very specific, so somebody want to volunteer what they saw in the picture. Really? I wouldn't call those normal, but two pencils, all right. Yeah, two draw pencils. Yeah. Six oranges with leaves. Yes. And three red apples. Yeah, and the key here is that we're trying to group things together. So if I click my thing here and put like things together, it's a little more clear as what we have. And we do have. We have two pencils, six oranges, and three apples. And that's the whole idea behind combining like terms or adding like expressions, grouping things together. Now, the next question I have for you is what mathematical property allowed me to do what I just did? And at this point, it should be obvious. Which mathematical property? It is the commutative property that allowed us to do that. Okay? Three apples, six oranges, two pencils. Collecting or combining all the like terms together made the question easier to answer. And that's basically how we're going to attack problems like this. Now, I know some of you had already started on some of these problems, and some of them are easier than others. So if I asked you what 2x plus 4x was, you would tell me what? 6x. 6x. Now, uh, there are some problems uh, in the homework tonight with modeling. So those of you right now continuing on in the notes need to stop for a second because I'm going to show you kind of what they will look like in terms of modeling. So this is one way of modeling 2x and 4x because you have 2x's and 4 more x's and when you gather them all together you clearly have 
uh, six x's there. Okay? How about this one? What will this simplify to? Six x, good. And if we were doing it in terms of modeling, that would look something like this. And what you need to realize here is that it's a lot, a lot like adding integers. We're trying to make zero pairs there. So, for example, we have a zero pair created with these two right here. So that's a zero pair, and we're left with, after we created our zero pair there, 6x. And that's just one way of looking at combining like terms or adding like expressions uh, with modeling. And uh, what would this one be? And it would be negative 3x. And doing it with modeling, it would look something like this. Once again, trying to make some zero pairs. We have a zero pair here, so that's gone. Remember, zero pairs make zero. And there's another zero pair, and you can clearly see what we're left with there would be three negative x's or negative 3x. So you are going to have some problems in the homework where you're going to have modeling uh, like that. All right. Here's what I would like you to do. I would like you to go ahead and try 6 through 10, and then I'll come back to you in about a minute. All right, let's compare all of those with our shoulder part of the ones take the odds, the twos take the evens. Go. All right, the one thing that I want to make clear is I threw out uh, this idea of something you did in the sixth grade yesterday. I mentioned it over and over and over again, equivalent expressions. And what you are creating here is you are creating equivalent expressions. 2x plus 4x, that's equivalent to 6x. 2x minus 5x, that is equivalent to negative 3x. Number 6, 2x minus 5x plus 6, that would be, of course, negative 2x. That's equivalent to that. Number 7, we should end up with n, or some of you I know wrote 1n. Same thing. We just don't need to necessarily write the 1. Number 8, of course, is 7n. Number 9 is 11c plus n, 2n. Now, uh, usually the question comes up, well, what if I have 2n plus 11c? Well, 2n plus 11c is equivalent to 11c plus 2n, but when we start getting in higher math courses, we typically like to see expressions written with variables in alphabetical order. So that's the main reason why I have 11c before 2n. And we will get to the point where I'm going to really want you to do that. And so number 10, you know, the question might be, well, what in the world is that problem doing in there? The point I'm trying to make here is this is no different than what we have done in uh, the previous unit. 5 plus negative 3 plus 12 plus negative 2. Um, if we were to model that with tiles, it would look like this. Right? It's the same thing. We're gathering like things together. And so we have some zero pairs. And what I'm left with, it looks like, is 12 positive units there. And so that's one reason why the sum there is positive 12. Okay? All right. Equivalent expressions. Now let's continue on here. One of the things that I like to do as the problems get messier is I start highlighting or circling like terms. And it's not that big of a deal in number 11, but if I were to give you an expression with like 15 terms in it, uh, it would get very, very messy. And so one of the things I like to do is highlight, use different shapes for like terms. So for some of you, that might help a little bit as the problems get messier. So we have 4x and 3x, that's 7x. Nothing to combine with the 5y, so my expression there is uh, 7x plus 5y. Can I get all of you to do 12, 13, and 14? So this idea of highlighting terms and combining them together out of order, once again, it's the commutative property that allows us to do that kind of thing. And uh, I'm going to continue doing them the same way through the rest of this lesson. We have a positive 4a and a negative 3a. That's a positive 1a. And then notice that I'm now using different shapes because I have more like terms that are not alike with 4a and negative 3a. Uh, so positive 6 and negative 2 makes positive 4. And so that becomes a plus 4 or simplifies to a plus 4. Uh, number 13. 
we have a 1x and a positive 2x. Those are all the x's that I can combine together. Then I have a positive 3y and a positive 4y. That's positive 7y, so plus 7y. And then a negative 2z and a positive 7z. That is a positive 5z. So that simplifies to 3x plus 7y plus 5z. Number 14. I put a 1 in front of the y, so I wouldn't forget that. I'm going to combine my y's together. I have 9 of them. Combine my x's together, and I have minus 2x. But remember, uh, eventually, that's not the way we're going to want to write it. We're really going to want to write it like this, because we like to see expressions in alphabetical order um, when we're writing algebraic expressions, OK? All right. Finish them off, please. All right, so number 15. Um, I wanted to end with one more problem with tiles just to show you it doesn't matter how much stuff is going on uh, within the expression. We can still utilize tiles. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because of uh, what you can see on that first page of your homework. Uh, this basically represents number 15 right here. And in dealing with this, and this is the way I want you to deal with these sorts of problems in your homework, is I want you to sort of take into consideration the idea of zero pairs. So right here I see seven positive ones. I can make zero pairs with six negative ones right there. And that's about all I can do from what I can see there. So I can see that I have six Ds and seven more, so that's 13 Ds. Uh, I'm going to try and keep with the idea of going in alphabetical order there, plus uh, 4Y. And then I can see I have five negatives and four more negatives. So that's plus negative nine, or the way that I prefer it is minus nine. So 13D plus 4Y minus nine. So when you get to those homework problems with tiles, uh, that's basically what I want you to do there. All right, and then number 16, I'll put a one in front of the C, so we end up with negative C or negative one C plus 4W minus four gathering like terms together. Notice how I kept it in alphabetical order. And then number 17, put a 1 in front of both of those x's, but we end up with only 5 in number 17. Are there any questions? All right, so one last thing here. And I don't care whether you write anything in the summary or not, but just to clear this up, these are like terms, these are not like terms. These are like terms, these are not like terms. Like terms you can combine together, unlike terms you cannot. These are like terms. These are not like terms. These are like terms. These are not like terms. Can I get you to quickly have a discussion with your shoulder partner? Why are the things on the left like, and why are the things on the right not alike? All right, back up front. What makes the, the uh, items on the left like and the items on the right not alike? On the side of the like, then the variable, if they have a variable, is the same like m and m or x and x, or they don't, both don't have a variable at all. Yeah. And one way of knowing, remembering it is the same variable with the same exponent, essentially, because that's what it's going to boil down to. Because if I were to... For example, write this as 3x squared. Now those are not like anymore. So we have to have same variable essentially with the same exponent, but we'll come back to that another day. And so like terms we can combine together, and unlike terms we cannot. All right, we are finished for today.